Joining us now on the Marmy Rock Show, we have San Francisco band Mudface joining us. We've got Chris and Rob from the band. Guys, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having us. Really appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, so I'm, I'm somewhat new to your band, but I'm excited to let the world know that the album The Bane of Existence is due out on March 18th, and uh, I've been listening to all the tunes, but um, first question I want to ask you, uh, the tune that's floating around that people can hear out there now is Hellfoot, and uh, what made you choose that tune? Was that hard to pick? <laughs> it's funny because we actually were going to select another song to, to, to actually have as the first single, but uh, we fought each other on it, and uh, we just we just had this feeling. The song kind of just means so much in so many ways, uh, at least for me personally, from a lyrical standpoint. Um, and uh, you know, and I think a lot of people, and at least what we've been told so far, is a lot of people have actually uh, you know have a you know personal feeling to that song. That something you know that song it calls to them, so to speak. So, um, so yeah, I, I'm really glad we chose that song as our first single, and yeah, it's a great song. We one of my favorites. What are some of the things a band talks about in that decision of what they're going to release? Is it is it a marketing thing? Is it an artistic thing? Like, what are the topics that come up in that discussion? Well, I, think, uh, I know for me, it's, it's it's part of it is how does it represent the band? So, so we really like that uh, that it was a very dynamic song, probably more so than a lot of other ones. With you know where it gets kind of quiet and it gets kind of loud and it gets kind of quiet. Um, but also everybody has to, it has to resonate with everyone in the band. Um, everyone has to feel that it's, you know, representing Mudface, and I'll let Chris kind of adds that. Yeah, I kind of feel like, personally, it's just a, it's a, it's a song that just, like I said, it's, it's a feel thing, most importantly. Uh, you always got to kind of go with your gut instinct, what's going to tell you what, you know, what you feel is the right thing to do. So, um, obviously, business you know, decisions come into play as well, but I think the end result is always going to be with what our gut instinct tells us to do. So once you pick the, the tune, you guys have put out a cool music video to that tune. Uh, tell us a little bit about the making of that video, that, that experience. Uh-huh. That was great. Uh, you know, we were able to get a lot of our local friends from the, from the Bay Area music scene, and just a lot of the fans came out. And, uh, you know, I had this idea of playing with this concept of, you know, you know, the, the song is kind of based on uh, choices we make in life and how choices basically kind of carve the path for you uh, as life goes on. Um, in this sense, this video is more of kind of almost how choices are almost made for you or in, in the sense of this video, it's almost kind of like, um, you know, not being able to be in control of your own choices. Um, a lot of people are weak in the mind. Um, people take advantage of that. There are those that are stronger in the mind than others. And uh, so we kind of did this whole play on the whole cult, you know, drink the Kool-Aid type of concept. And uh, it just matched really well with the song. Hey, so another tune that people are able to hear right now uh, prior to the album is the tune out there called Anthem. And uh, that one has sort of an apocalyptic message to it. Did I, did I understand it that way or did I, that's kind of the way I took it? <laughs> Yeah, definitely. It's uh, it's kind of basically just uh, <clears throat> you know, you guys better keep your eyes peeled, and and almost kind of almost like people are starting to push back. You know, there's a lot of tyranny in the world, and a lot of at least in this country, especially, there's a lot of you know not knowing. Uh, it's almost kind of scary to a point, not knowing what you know. A lot of people are kind of confused as to where we're going um, in this world. Um, and with technology being just, you know, coming so quickly and it almost feels like we're being numbed and dumbed down and it's just, it's just sort of a kind of a warning to pay attention, you know, keep your eyes peeled because, you know, if we're not careful, we can lose a lot of, uh, your rights and lose a lot of just who we are as a people and an individual in our, in our, in our, in our self, you know, it's like, you know, it's almost like people are trying to sort of take away from who we are, and we've got to be able to get that back. So uh, hopefully I'm not bringing a mistake to your guys' attention here. I look today, is it actually correct that, like, people can pre-order your album right now for, like, four bucks on iTunes? Is that accurate? Uh, I don't know. Is that accurate, Rob? <laughs> I, I know it's less than traditional. So so we're working with um, with with someone who's who's kind of guiding us, right? He says, you know, nobody's going to pay, for instance, you know, 
um, full price for your song when you're a nobody and nobody's going to pay full price for your album. I mean, it's bad enough with downloading and everything going on right now where, you know, your, your biggest artists in the world, you know, your, your Taylor Swift and, you know, people like that, they have a hard time selling units. <clears throat> Whereas, you know, Mudface, who the heck are these guys and why would I, you know, pay for it? So we're trying to be competitive, understanding that, um, you know, like any, you know, you have to look at it as like a, as a business starting out, right? We're, we're trying to prove ourselves. And so, um, yeah, I think things are priced a little bit lower to make it enticing for people to kind of check us out. It'll be the best four bucks ever spent. I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why I brought it up. I was telling people, it's like, hey man, low risk. Go out, chill out a couple of dollars. You can pick that one up and pre-order it right now. So, um, hey, I'd like you to compare this album a little bit to the, the first album. I feel like the band's kind of great quite a bit in listening to the two albums side by side. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we definitely grew a lot with this, the second album. I, uh, this net, you know, the band of existence definitely has a, a, a lot of growth to it. A lot of people who have heard it already, uh, some of our friends and people in the, in the scene and stuff have all said the same thing. It's like, you guys have definitely stepped it up. Um, I think that we stay true to who we are. Um, uh, for the most part, but we really built on trying to come up with stronger hooks and things that people can actually sing along to. Um, cause I know I like when I go to shows, I like to see, I want to know what they're saying. I want to know what the message is. I want to feel that music. You know, and so I feel like we took a lot of the energy. We took, we still have the energy from the last album, but we wanted to make this one, you know, a lot more, um, you know, for lack of a lesser word, accessible and just, you know, something that people can really grab onto. You know, songs have messages this time. And you mentioned, like, you like to know what the band's saying, what it's about, and that's one of the questions I wrote down. I was kind of intrigued by the cover art of the album as well as the titles of, of the tunes. Is it in any way a concept album, or, or is it just kind of a common theme that sort of runs through the record? <laughs> yeah, it's kind of, con- it's I guess it's kind of borderline. Um you know, the artwork just kind of, it's one of those things that once again, something just kind of calls out to you. And we were kind of looking for, you know, we knew we had, we, we recorded this, this album that we felt really good about. And so we wanted, you know, everything to sort of kind of go along with it. And, um, we've got some really, we've got some really good thinking guys in this band when it comes to putting the whole entire package together. And, uh, we did a little research with some artists out there. And we found a um, uh, a guy out of France uh, named Pierre Alain D. Um, great, he's an amazing artist. Um, but we just happened to come upon him, and uh, we he actually had a piece of artwork already up that he had done that was he was putting up for sale, and we saw it, and it was like, wow, that totally called out to us. So, um, yeah, he does amazing work. So I, I did want to ask you about one tune on the first record because uh, I, I was just trying to figure it out what it was about a little bit, and I'm going to feel dumb if it was something obvious. But tune 1969, can you tell me a little bit more about that tune? <laughs> you know what? That song is a little weird in the sense that um, it's kind of one of the songs that has. <laughs> you can kind of just it, sometimes I write songs where you're kind of going, huh? You know, even <laughs> I kind of go, huh? But then when I start start putting it together, it to me that song. I have this whole thing about the late sixties, early seventies, and that there was like this really weird vibe of stuff going on with, you know, people getting assassinated and, you know, cults and all this kind of stuff that was going on around that time. And it just has a lot of that whole kind of weird era stuff in it mixed in there. It's kind of one of the songs that really doesn't have a super rhyme or reason to it. It's just kind of what I wrote down at the time. <laughs> and it's just like, oh, this is what it sounds like to me. So uh, one of the more unique things about your band, I don't recall too many bands that have this, you have a father and son team of musicians in the band, do you not? Yeah, yeah, we do. Um, <clears throat> my son Grant, uh, he's, um, we're both like guitar players. And he's uh, he's actually been playing live since uh, he was like thirteen. Does that present any uh, different kind of dynamics in the band? Like, you know, after husband and wife be there, boyfriend girlfriend, is there any unusual dynamics that exist with having a father and son in the same band? Um, I think I'm the tightest um, with him. I mean, I've been playing forever and in a variety of different bands with different you know guitar players. 
And there's always like, well, hey, man, you know, I thought the riff went this way, dun, 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 right? You know, and you get into the nuances of the riffing and everything. And um, I have to say that with him, I'm the most dialed in that I've ever been with anyone. Hey, so uh, last thing before I let you guys go, I know that um, when the album comes out, you guys are going to be doing some uh, touring. Do you have any um, dates to talk about at all yet, or are you just going to, in a more general sense, can you kind of tell us, are you going to be in the Bay Area, or are you going to be traveling the country? Right now, we just have one date booked. We're actually in the process of getting a bunch of stuff worked out right now. We will mainly be focusing on the western states first, but we will be working our way in, and, of course, obviously trying to work our way over to Europe as well. Um, we do have a date on May 29th here in Oakland in the Bay Area with a, an awesome band called Psychosomatic. Um, so, yeah, um, dates are coming. We've been so busy getting this album, all this album stuff ready to go. It's Now, we, now we're into the next phase of getting out there and, and uh, pushing this record. You guys going to do any spe- anything special on the 18th when it comes out? Do you have a special uh, party planned or anything, or are you just going to sit around and watch you know, the numbers? You know, here's the crazy thing is we already, we had actually done something for our fans here in the Bay Area back in November. Um, we were actually going to release the album a while back, but we put a hold on it. Um, however, we had already had a CD release show booked, and so we didn't want to let our fans down. So we did a small number of uh, CD release to our, our fans, you know, um, and yeah, it ended up being an awesome show. Uh, we had a lot of people come out more than we expected. Uh, considering it was the day after a holiday. And, uh, yeah, it ended up being awesome. But yeah, nothing really super planned. Um, I do know we're, you know, we're probably going to do some little contests here and there and, you know, maybe try to put some packages together, um, to make it exciting for the fans out there. Well, the new album is called Bane of Existence. It's going to be out on March 18th, and you can pick that thing up for about four bucks on iTunes right now if you pre-order it. So I strongly encourage people to go over and do that. Pick that one up today. And, uh, this has been, uh, the guys from Mud Face there from San Francisco. And one more time, the album is The Bane of Existence out March the 18th. Guys, thanks so much for being here. Thank you right, very thanks. much for having us.